So I live in Tokyo and I'm now walking in the center of Tokyo. I'm on the way to a conference at a production company. Um, and, um, it's going to be fun, I think. It's a lunch meeting and I have my token mask here, face mask here, as usual. So, you know, we are living in a global economy and we are living in a global village. And although I'm based in Tokyo, I feel as if I'm part of a global process. And it, this is, is a feeling I have never had in my youth. And it's quite interesting to observe. And you don't actually feel local, no matter where you are. I mean, it used to be like when you were in Tokyo, you would feel local, whether you, if you're in London or New York or in Paris, just to name the huge suspects, um, you would feel linked to the global culture, which is, of course, an illusion. But the illusion is nowadays ubiquitous. Uh, you know, it's a reality, too. So no matter where you are, uh, whether you're in Tokyo, whether in Seoul, or in Beijing, or in some village in Africa, you're part of the global process anyway. You know, so it doesn't really matter where you are because seen from the ISS or you know, seen from the any satellite really, um, it doesn't make any real difference um, where, where you are. So I think this is a really nice and important new spirituality really. Uh, the fact, the increasingly important fact that uh, it doesn't really matter where you reside in order to be relevant to the global culture. Uh, the advent of the internet in the 1990s probably foreshadowed this, but we are only now seeing it materialize in August, and I'm glad to see that. Uh, you know, I feel so invigorated and emboldened and, you know, happy that I can be relevant to the global process and some people in the so-called cultural centers like New York or London might still under, be under an illusion that you know they are the epicenter of global culture and what they uh, output uh, influences the world and which is a Fact, and I don't uh, dispute that, but you know, given sufficient ingenuity and sufficient uh, effort, you can make your voice heard anywhere on the earth. As I repeat, no matter where you are, you, if whether you are in, in Japan or the Philippines or um, you know, in the Pacific Islands, South America, Africa, yeah, you can. Make your voice heard out of Africa or out of Asia or out of Australia for that matter. So the thing is to listen to the distant sounds because you know I'm now based in Tokyo. Now I see you know close-ups and you know things that come my way from short distances, but that's not sufficient because I need to also hug to the distant noises, distant signals, and that's the only way I can embrace this planet, the Earth. It is to live as if I am on the International Space Station, IAS, ISS, uh, circulating the Earth every 90 minutes, although while I'm here on this Earth, uh, on Tokyo, um, I would like to feel as if I am on the ISS as well, and seeing the Earth from up there, up there. Yeah, this dual vision is a necessary condition for the local global coexistence of our exist, you know, individual being on this Earth on in this century. So I am. I don't know I'm, why I'm bubbling like this. Uh, maybe I'm just trying to certify certain facts to me. But I'm working locally, I'm 
living locally, I'm breathing locally. Uh, I feel as if what I do would eventually be, you know, connected to uh, what other people on this earth are doing. And it is this belief that uh, makes you carry on with your daily chores. So I hope you have a nice day. I will have my nice one here in Tokyo.